Well, a surprising good evening to you from my local area. I'm talking to you tonight because I've got an early morning breakfast with my son, so um, I shan't be able to be on stream tomorrow morning, so I thought I'd come out this evening on a bike ride and share a little ride and talk with you. Well, I was watching a program this evening uh, <clears throat> on one of the, uh, f what we call the Freeview channels in the UK, and uh, it's called That 60s, and it's all 1960s music which is really all from my era, really. And um, I was quite struck by one of the songs, and I sort of tied it up in a way with the messages that I've been giving you over the last couple of days, with that great big list of things that have happened over the last three years. And I was thinking particularly of uh, the way that people are walking around with blindfolds on, really, not really seeing what's going on around them not understanding where we are in the world today and uh, I listened to this particular song and I'll share the words with you and um, I just thought some of those songs from the 60s they're quite prophetic really and uh, well I've got them here so um, I'm just gonna pan down I don't know whether you can see it clearly but uh, it says there the eastern world is exploding Violence flaring, bullets loading. You're old enough to kill, but not for voting. You don't believe in war, but what's that gun you're toting? And even the Jordan River has bodies floating. But you tell me over and over again, my friend, how you don't believe we're on the eve of destruction. It's the song by Barry Maguire, Eve of Destruction. And uh, he sung it with real passion. And of course, in those days, uh, you had the Vietnam War, you had mass protests in the street for civil rights. All kinds of things were happening. But um, they never spoke, of course, of the end times in the way that we do. And it really made me think that in those days, he could talk about being on the eve of destruction. How much more so are we not in that same situation today? On the eve of destruction. On the eve of a situation that, um, well, it's unprecedented, isn't it? The times that we're living in. I'll just read a few more lyrics, actually. It says here, Don't you understand what I'm trying to say? Can't you feel the fears I'm feeling today? If the button is pushed, there's no running away. There'll be no one to save with the world in a grave. Take a look around you, boy. It's bound to scare you, boy. Over and over and over again, my friend, how you don't believe we're on the eve of destruction. And isn't it true how we talk to our friends, those that don't have their eyes open to what's going on around them in the world? And um, they just can't see it, can they, that we're on the eve of destruction? I'll just finish off the song here. It says, yeah, my blood's so mad. Feels like coagulating. I'm sitting here just contemplating. I can't twist the truth. It knows no regulation. Handful of senators don't pass legislation. And marches alone can't bring integration when human respect is disintegrating. This whole what crazy world is just too frustrating. And you let me, and you tell me over and over and over again, my friend, how you don't believe we're on the eve of destruction. And it just goes on, doesn't it? Quite a lot more words. I won't finish it, but there's the poignant phrases here about the world in a grave. Take a look around you, it says. Can't you see what's going on? Sometimes you, you feel in a way um, that you want to shake people. You want to make them realize, can't you see we're on the eve of destruction? I was watching a, an interview this evening with um, 
Nigel Farage, and he's uh, quite well known in the UK. You may know him in America as Mr. Brexit. He helped us actually get the, uh, the Brexit vote through in 2016. And he has his own little radio uh, TV slot, really, on a channel called GB News, which is regarded, actually, in this country as uh, controlled opposition. But he was interviewing somebody from the Office of National Statistics in the UK, and they were looking at the situation with the, the V, OK, and all the harms that are being done with the V. And uh, as I was talking about this morning, the excess deaths that are occurring, as they were saying on the, their particular interview, that um, there were a thousand excess deaths a week. And, of course, the government isn't accounting for it. And the uh, chap that was being interviewed was saying that he wants a public inquiry that must be independent. And I just thought to myself, well, you'll be lucky. Because one thing that the media won't allow, mainstream media that is, in collaboration with the government, as I was saying this morning, is an independent inquiry into these excess deaths. Can you imagine the collapse of Big Pharma in that situation? All the trillions that have been spent rolling out these Vs and seeing eventually how, how much harm they're doing. More harm than good. And that's the situation. Actually, I, <clears throat> as I'm riding along here, I thought I would finish the lyrics because um, it makes mention here of particular places, which of course were trouble spots in the 1960s. And it goes on here, this last um, stanza of the song. And think of all the hate there is in red China. Then take a look around to Selma, Alabama. Ah, you may leave here four days in space, for four days in space. But when you return, it's the same old place. The sounding of the drums, the pride and disgrace. You can bury your dead, but don't leave a trace. Hate your next door neighbor, but don't forget to say grace. And you tell me over and over and over again, my friend, you don't believe we're on the eve of destruction. No, no, you don't believe we're on the eve of destruction. Well, we know what's happening with Red China, don't we? And we also know what's going on in the southern borders of the United States. And yet, also, with regard to the space race and people going up, they're still going up in space. And yet all down here, there's just one big mess, isn't it? One big dilemma while they're up there in space. It's interesting, isn't it? And you can look at those words and you can really fit them into any time, I suppose. And you can see the, the pride it's referring to here. The pride and disgrace. But yet men don't see the state of their souls. They don't see where they're going, do they? There's only one way out. And that one way out is the cross. The cross of Jesus. That was the whole gospel, wasn't it? The whole point of Jesus coming. Repent for the kingdom of heaven. He was saying basically this. Repent because you're on the eve of destruction. Yes, a lot of these songs were prophetic. And they were commercial. And people danced to them. And the same today. People dance to tunes. And of course people are dancing, aren't they, to the tunes of the devil. Dancing to the enemy's tune. Yes, following his panpipes and following him to destruction. He wants to take as many with him as he can. So the battle is on, the final battle for souls. And even on this beautiful quiet evening as I cycle around here, People are in their homes, their individual houses, watching their TVs, listening to their radios, reading their newspapers, 
doing the things they normally do. And as the scripture says, all of a sudden it'll happen. He'll come like a thief in the night when they're not expecting him. Jesus will return and then their destruction will be sure, sadly sure. So this is a time for us, isn't it? Just one week into the new year when we recognize where the world is and what God wants us to do, how he wants us to pray, how he wants us to share his word, how he wants us to live and to be aware of what's going on around us. Many individual lives are on the eve of destruction. Marriages, families, wayward children, broken homes. People are orphaned. They've got no leader, they've got no guide, no one to lead them, show them the way. But we've got the light. We've got the light of Jesus Christ. We've got that gospel. So that's my exhortation to you tonight and to myself. We're on the eve of destruction, but yet also we're on the eve of a construction, a construction in Christ. He's building his house, building his house with living stones, lively stones. And when that house is built, what a joy it will be. A house of prayer, a house of joy, a house of harmony, true harmony. Not the unity that the world can offer, but the harmony that is in Christ. His body, one with him, immersed in his love. So I pray tonight it's a blessed one for you and I'll see you, God willing, on Tuesday morning. <laughs>